Hello guys, in this video I want to talk about PHP 8 named arguments and specific example I had recently where you don't need to use those named arguments but it's really beneficial for readability. So first let's take a look. Since PHP 8 and that article by Brent was written in 2020, so for like four years already, you can have something like this. In your code while calling some function, you may specify what is the parameter name. Example here from this article, in the constructor you have three arguments and while calling that class you provide this name, email and age which seems kind of pointless because they are in that exact order, but it may be not so pointless if you have something like this. So you have a function with like seven parameters, which is maybe a bad practice, but anyway, it happens. And then you need to use only like three of them. And then this, first, it's not really readable. And then it may not even work if you don't have default values for the parameters that you don't specifically call. So this is what helps named arguments. So typically the conclusion out of that is that you use named arguments only when you have non-standard set of parameters to the function. So if the function has seven parameters, you pass only five or only four. If they don't have default values, then named arguments helps you to make that function call work. But also look at this example I had recently. Laravel benchmark class function with the method dd accepts a few parameters and this is the code that you may encounter for example in my case in routes it may be in controller in whatever. You're calling the function dd with the array of this is kind of readable so which code snippets you may want to benchmark but then the other parameter is number 10. Imagine what happens in the head of a developer who opens that code to debug something or to understand something and sees that number. It's not clear immediately what that 10 means. Is it 10 seconds of something like limitation? Is it some other number? It's unclear. And of course, some IDE, this is I open that in general in Sublime Text, some IDEs may show you that. So the same code in PHP Storm, it would be probably similar in VS Code or if you configure Sublime Text, this automatically shows that the variable 10 means iterations. So how many times each of those sentences should be executed. But then there's also another case of quickly glancing through the code, not necessarily in IDE like PHP Storm. What if you have a pull request to review something like this and you have the same number 10 on GitHub? By default, again, GitHub will not show you that it is iterations. So in those cases, even if your parameters are exactly in the same order as it should be and only two parameters, sometimes it makes sense to provide the name of the argument so it would be clear for others. So this is much more clear from wherever you open that code in whatever IDE or text editor or GitHub or wherever. This is clearly iterations. So yeah, kind of a quick tip, but with a backstory of why you would need that. And I talk a lot more about such PHP functionalities and other stuff in a course called PHP for Laravel developers, because I see quite a lot of Laravel developers start with Laravel, but don't know enough about fundamentals of object-oriented programming, PHP features like named arguments, for example, and other useful details. So I will link that course in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.